Welcome to another training video with Antiference. My name's Dan and today we're going to look at the Quad HDMI to DVB-T modulator. So what this product does is converts four HDMI sources into digital channels allowing a digital uh, HD distribution over a coax network. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the product in a bit more detail. We're going to look at how you program it, um, how you connect it into a normal system um, and how to get the system up and running. Okay, so in this section of the video, we're going to look at programming. So in order to program the unit, you need to download the DTVI face, which is a Windows-based software, from our website. So locate the Connexa products um, on our website, find the product page, go to the Downloads tab, and you'll find the DTVI face. So download it, install it on your machine, and then we can start programming. So once you've got it connected, you should see it looking a little bit like this. You've got three main sections. This is the encoder section. This is the modulator section over on the right, and at the bottom is our main output table, so uh, which we'll talk about in a little while. So each of the inputs has got its own programming fields um, where you can name the channel and you've got uh, the ability to adjust your video and audio rates and audio standards as well. So as you'll see, we've put some names in already because we're using a Blu-ray player and obviously um, you would probably name the other inputs depending on what the devices are, so we've just picked some stuff just as an example. Over on the right hand side is the modulator section. So the top uh, line, the NIT section, are factory settings that don't need to be changed. Um, so you can always refer back to these on this video at a later date, should those values have changed for some reason. Um, just below that are our uh, frequency output settings, which is our channel number. Okay, So you'll see there's three of them, um, because we've got up to three multiplexes available to us. And we can assign the inputs to different outputs, however we want to configure it. Okay. Factory setting is for output 1 or the primary output to be set to channel 21. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the other two channels will automatically link and follow wherever you set channel 21 to. They'll sit adjacent, one and two channels above respectively. Okay, So make sure you leave enough space in the band if you're using all three. Below that you'll see the TSID values which uniquely identify those transport streams to the TV. Again, as you'll see, they're all different, um, only need to be one uh, nu numerical, numerically different to the others. We've got our multiplex composition settings below that. Um, so again, these are the factory settings which shouldn't need to be changed under normal, uh, normal circumstances. Uh, below that is our level output, the level attenuation, um, which for this purposes of this demonstration, we've reduced it to its maximum attenuation because the unit does kick out 95 dB um, max output, which is obviously quite powerful. Most TVs can handle between 45 and 65. Some can handle a little bit more these days. But of course, um, there is obviously the likelihood that if the, unless the system is exceptionally large, that you'll need to adjust the output level so as to not overpower the TVs. So you may find that actually even within the internal attenuation that's not enough um, signal reduction. So you may need to consider introducing some external attenuators. So there are push fit ones available on the market or more popular these days are the F type ones which obviously are a screw type fit. So they may need to be added and you can get various values of those. So if you are installing these on a regular basis it would be a good idea to keep some attenuators on the van. Okay. So below that you'll see that we've got three output stream indicator bars. Each one is uh, indicating how much bandwidth is being used from each of the streams. So because we're only using one source, we've only got a little bit of bandwidth being used. This is very helpful because if you do overload a multiplex, you'll see very quickly because the green bar will be up here bouncing off the top. And of course, if you find you set the system up and you've got picture breakup, for example, on the TVs, and you go back to the software and you realise that the MUX is being overloaded, that's probably why you've got signal breakup. All right. So, so when we add services to the output streams, more green bar will appear on the output streams depending on which one you're adding them to. So, looking at the table at the bottom, we've got our inputs via, uh, by name as we program them and our SID numbers which have to be unique again, which is the service ID uh, by the way. If we move straight across to the modulation column, which is uh, one of the most important ones down here because this is where we assign our inputs to our outputs. So if you think of it like this, that each column is related to an output stream. We've got three outputs, 
three columns. So the, out, the, the first column that you get to, moving left to right, will, will be directly related to channel 21 in this case. So any green plus that you um, make appear in this column will assign that output, in this case blue, rain, sky, to that output stream and bandwidth will appear on the bar as it's done. What you, see, what you can see we've done is we've actually programmed Apple TV to be on channel 22, if you like, in its own unique mux, and the Amazon Firebox is on channel 23. So it's, it's sensible to spread them out if you can, especially if they're high um, content usage like a Skybox using sports channels or something like that. So that's why there's more than one output stream available. The other column uh, that's very important is the LCN number, stands for logical channel number, and this is the number or the part of the transport stream that tells the TV set where to put the channel within the EPG. So if you want it to, put, to appear in a particular location, this is where you set it. So you can see we've set a couple already, and these are just set by double clicking in the column. Cursor will appear, you just type whatever you want. So let's say we want to put that on 444, just for argument's sake. So, and then the channel will appear in that location on the EPG. Obviously making sure to pick an empty channel in the EPG um, because obviously you're not able to crash over one that's already in existence if you're using local terrestrial services. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video, um, which hopefully has given you a good overview of um, the quad input HDMI modulators. Um, for more information, you can visit our website at www.antiference.co.uk. Um, but if you do need some additional support, you can contact our technical support team um, by emailing support at antiference.co.uk or contact our offices um, where somebody will be happy to help you out if you've got any other questions. In the meantime, do look out for our other videos, um, which do cover other topics of products that are in our range um, on our YouTube channel or on the section on our website. So thanks for watching.